Welcome to the research and development greenhouses here at Spring Meadow Nursery, home of proven winners, color choice flowering shrubs. I'm Dr. Judson LeCompte, and today I'm joined by our plant breeder, Megan Matai. We're gonna give you a little bit of behind the scenes look on our research and development and our plant breeding teams and what we are doing to push crepe myrtles forward into the 21st century. Being from Alabama, you know I love crepe myrtles. Used to big natches and on every street corner, they're everywhere. So we're really excited to be able to share with you um, what we're doing here at Spring Meadow Nursery. So behind us, you can see a lot going on. It's over seven acres of greenhouse that we evaluate all of our new introductions in. We've got over 10,000 different plants here, over 1,500 different accessions. So it's a lot of work. We've got a big team of super qualified people. It's a lot of fun to come to work every day. So Megan, tell us a little bit about um, making that initial cross, right? So you're making that cross. Where does the breeding program go from there? Sure. Um, so we make the initial cross, we grow out our seed lot, and you know, sometimes people think that's the hard part. That's that's nowhere near yeah. that's nowhere near the hard part. So we make the cross, we get to go through, you know, thousands of seedlings. We select out the best plants based on flower color, habit, leaf color, things that are clean of disease. And that part's fun. We get to give them a name and then we decide which plants go into the trial. And then that is where the whole breeding process gets a little hard. Yeah. So after we name, you know, a handful of selections, they get propagated up into a trial of uh, 38 plants. I know we're in Michigan, but yeah. we do trial some of these varieties out in our field. And they live, watch yeah, out. <laughs> some of them do survive as a dieback shrub. We, yep. you know, we always err on the side of caution in our catalog, but some of them have overwintered here in our zone five research field. And then we also grow them in, in the container and in, in, a, in a growing type trial setting. Good, so we've got them um, in a containerized trial here in the greenhouse. We've got them in a zone five field uh, out there. And then they also go into a zone six manicured landscape, uh, which is beautiful. So we really put them through their paces because we want them to not only be grower friendly, right? We want to take care of our growers. We want to make sure that they are profitable in the products that they produce, but we also want to make sure that it performs exceptionally well in the landscape because that's where it's going to live its life. So when I joined the team a little over a year ago, I was super excited to see center stage red. It was shining in all its glory, super dark foliage, flat, glossy leaf, bright, bright red flowers. So tell us about the selection process of center stage and, and really what made that plant stand out. Center stage red is the first introduction into that series. Yep. Our breeding program is in Michigan. So that's a really unique place for a yep. crepe myrtle breeding program, but it has led us to certain advantages. So because our season is a little bit cooler, it's a little bit shorter, we have the advantage of selecting for earlier flowering yep. plants. So center stage red um, was pre previously all of our Lagostromia were selected based on branch structure and you know that dark, dark yep. foliage. And then anything out of that group that bloomed early um, got put into an evaluation. Oh, very cool. I know growing up in the South and growing a lot of plants in the South, one of the biggest issues we have with crepe myrtle is circus relief spot. So we have these big mature plants and about July, they would start getting some spots. The leaves would turn a little bit red. They completely defoliate. And by August, all of our gray had no leaves. And so we miss out on the bright oranges and yellows and reds of fall color. So how do you select uh, for Cercospora leaf resistant or leaf spot resistance, powdery mildew, other diseases here in Michigan where it's cool and not really that big of a problem? Right, right. Um, we do have a minimal Cercospora disease pressure. So especially varieties that are highly susceptible to Cercospora, we yep. see it here, we see it in our trial, we see our plants out in the field. Um, and we also grow comparisons with all of our trialing plants. So we know for sure if something that is highly susceptible to Cercospora that we have it here and that we're yep. seeing it in the trials. We have a very high uh, pressure for powdery mildew. Yes. So we have a zero tolerance policy for powdery mildew in our breeding program. It's really sometimes frustrating because we get that new plant, we get it, you know, 
a plant that's perfect, it has all those traits that I previously mentioned, and then we get it into the trialing process and all of a sudden it has powdery mildew and so we, we have a zero tolerance policy. For so I guess that, that makes selection really easy at the beginning because everything that gets powdery mildew you can just chunk We can just chunk get rid of it. Yeah, yep. yep. We also have um, a few external trial sites and one of our uh, toughest trial sites is in Florida. It's very tough. Yep. I'm the one that gets to go visit. Very tough. Even for an Alabama boy, 100 and something degrees, basically 100% humidity. You can cut it with a knife. Um, the plants stand up just as well as here as they do down there. Um, I've been in touch with growers in Texas and Georgia and California, and they're loving the Center Stage Series. So from the Center Stage Series, drum roll please, what is your favorite plant? Your favorite baby? My favorite baby. Um, I mean, so originally I'd want to say Center Stage Red because that was the first one. That was the one that we pushed through. Uh, but I have a new favorite. My new favorite out of all three is Center Stage Pink. It's a very vibrant, raspberry rich color and it just stands out in a field if you drive by. It's a nice contrast with the foliage. Megan's completely wrong. Center Stage Coral is the best one. I love the muted color of the coral with the bright purple. It just goes so well together, which is different from most of my selections. I generally like very gaudy colors and Megan likes more muted colors. So. Anything else you would like to leave the group with, parting-wise, with crepe myrtle? Where is the future headed for crepe myrtles? Strong disease tolerance and disease resistance is still going to hold true. That's just kind of a given. Uh, we are looking at evaluating more tree forms, so bigger. Um, you know, we're, we would like to also then continue to fill out the color lineup. So we have been evaluating other colors. It's just uh, uh -oh. so something might come. A little, little teaser. teaser. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Megan. Um, it has been a pleasure to be with you on video today. I wish that we could be there in person, um, but hopefully soon, maybe next year. So we wish you all the best and we hope you'll have a wonderful event. If you ever have any questions, make sure you reach out to us at springmeadownursery.com. Once again, I'm Dr. Judson LeConte. Megan Matai. We look forward to seeing you. If you're ever in West Michigan, make sure you stop by.